And in this lesson, we're going to do a quick review over ratios in similar polygons. Again, we know that this is a topic that you've likely seen before with pre-algebra, algebra one, and so this is intended to be a quick re refresher, not an in-depth explanation of why everything is there. Uh, our objectives are fairly simple. If you can look at two polygons, be able to identify, are these things similar, yes or no? And also, if they are similar, we'd like to be able to solve some problems related to them being similar. And so we start off with something just this straightforward. Two polygons are similar if they are the same shape, but usually different sizes. The best way that we can describe this right here for similarity, if I take the picture, I can blow it up and make it bigger, and it still looks the same. I can take my image and shrink it down, and it still looks the same. Similarity means that the shapes are the same, it's just bigger or smaller versions of each other. Well, when we're working with those, generally speaking, we'll pay attention to the angles. Sides, of course, have a role, but we can easily identify when things are not similar when the angles don't match up. Over here on the right, we can see that here we've got a 90 degree angle, but the corresponding angle is not 90. When we don't have congruent corresponding angles, that's a very rapid way of saying these shapes are actually different from each other, and so they're not similar. In order for them to be similar, we have to have the same size angle being congruent, just bigger or smaller side lengths. And so we look into these very similar to what we did with congruency. What are the three pairs of corresponding angles and the three pairs of corresponding sides? Essentially, what are the pieces that match up with each other? Well, I'm going to start off with the angles. Angle M, angle N, and angle P. What are their corresponding angles? The easiest one would to get is N with Q. 90 obviously matches up with 90, so N and Q have to be the same. We'd wind up having angle M with angle T. If you think about it, we could reflect it over. We could take the one on the right and reflect it over for vertically to get the same orientation. And if you're having a hard time seeing that, here's another way that we could think about it. 2.2 is the longest side, angle, and 2 is the medium side. Angle M is between the big and medium. That behavior has to stay the same. The angle that's in between the big and the medium is likewise angle T. That's how we can identify they go together. Of course, leaving us then with angle R to go with angle P. Now let's get the three sides. Short side, medium side, and long side. What do they get paired with? Of course, short, medium, and long have to correspond with short, medium, and long. NP would match up with QR. And then would go with QT. And MP with TR. There, we have our six statements. We had the same type of problem when we first introduced congruency back in last semester. And remember, when we wrote up a congruency statement, we had something like angle triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. And when we wrote up our the statement, it had the notation where angle one matches angle one, and position two matches position two, three matches three. Well, this is a notation that we can't use exactly because 
congruent means same shape and same size. Similarity doesn't have that size component to it. It's just the same shape. We still have a notation that's basically the same. Instead of using the congruent symbol, this is our symbol for similarity. Basically just the squiggly that was on top of congruence. And our notation still winds up being the same. We would be able to write out triangle MNP is similar to triangle and just make sure that the angles match up. M corresponded with T, so position 1 has to match position 1. N was position 2, so Q needs to be position 2. There. Here would be our similarity statement. And remember, this one sentence says the exact same thing as all six of those combined. Making it much, much more easy to interpret all of them. We'd also like to note, we didn't look at it in the last problem, but anytime we work with similarity, the similarity ratio is going to be a huge part of what we're looking at. In particular, we can build a ratio of those matching sides. When we look at the last problem, and here I need to erase a bunch. We can take the medium side with the medium side and create a ratio, 2 to 1. If we take the long side and the long side, well, if we just simplify that ratio, it's 2 to 1. And if we take short side with short side, likewise, that's the ratio 2 to 1. In order to have similar figures, every single pair of corresponding sides will always have the exact same similarity ratio. So if you already know something is similar, you can just create the ratio and quickly say, here's what it is. So looking at the images, write up a similarity ratio and a similarity statement. Okay, so to check if they are similar, we can use any pair of sides to determine what the similarity ratio is. I'm a fan of using the smallest side because if you use the small sides, you get the smallest numbers. And I think smaller numbers are usually easier to work with. So to write down the similarity ratio, I'm going to look at small side and small side. 45 to 18. Of course, those both have a factor of 9 in them, so we can divide it out and simplify it down to 5 to 2. This is our similarity ratio. And that part is done. We did not have to pick small with small. If we wanted to, we could have used any pair of corresponding sides. If we wanted to take the big side with the big side, 75 with 30, both of those have a common factor of 15, which gives you 5 to 2. If we wanted to take medium with medium, we could have done it that way. Dividing out by the common factor 12, it's still the ratio of 5 to 2. It doesn't matter which pair of corresponding sides you take. We just need one of them. It's worth noting, a significant part of our unit is actually going to address this question. Are these triangles similar? Well, visually, you can look at it and say, yes, they look like the same shape. 
how would you know for sure? As a part of our unit, we are going to say, here are a bunch of theorems that let us know for sure. Here's how you can use movement in the coordinate plane to know for sure. Lastly, to write up the similarity statement, triangle LMJ is similar to triangle. Well, what corresponds with L? Well, of course, we've got our tick mark here for angle L. So does angle P. 90 matches 90, which leaves our third angle. There, we're done. And again, you only needed one pair of sides and the similarity statement. We're done. Our last example for the video. When you were back in pre-algebra, you of course had problems that were like this. Set up a proportion, solve the word problem based on your proportion. And of course, that proportion method was based on identifying corresponding parts. 1.8 clearly matches up with 6.3. So we could build our proportion and then observing 5 meters matches up with x centimeters. This is one of the many different correct ways to build a proportion. And we know cross multiply. 1.8 times x, 6.3 multiplied by 5, that's 31.5. And if we divide out to solve, 31.5 divided by 1.8. You grab your calculators and verify that's 17.5 centimeters. And we're done. This little model race car had to be 17.5 centimeters long to look like the real thing. And we're done. Can do that on the board.